Welcome back to the Packet Lab. Today we're going to take a look at configuring a frame relay switch in GNS3. All right, there's not going to be a lot of theory or slides with this lesson. It's going to be hands-on. This is a network that we're going to be building. If you want, you're watching the video, you can pause the video and do a screen capture so you can refer back to this. Or if you're getting this from the Packet Lab site, you can download the slides and just keep this available. It's not that difficult of a network. All right, so I've got GNS3 fired up here. And if you look on the left, you can see these are the devices that we can add to our simulated network. And the first ones are all routers. There's a um PIX, ASA Firewall, Juniper Router, I haven't played with that yet, that'll be interesting. These guys down here, starting with the Ethernet switch, those are all pretty much dumb devices, and our frame relay switch is going to be one of those. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this and just drag it into the middle of our GNS3 network area here, and then I'm going to grab uh, 33640s, I believe, and drag it and drop it. And the first thing I do with these is I go ahead and right click them and I choose to change the console port because by default it's going to oops did I not choose that change the console port okay by default it's going to use 2000 I like to have the last number in the console port match up with the router so 2001 will be R1 and just do that for the first one the subsequent ones that you pull in should automatically we check this here show the console port well I'll just do a change console port yeah it, the, the subsequent ones will then number up from your first one so you should be good to go here let's drop these guys in put them in their place all right so we have our devices placed and let's go ahead and get to it select the frame reader relay switch and then you can right click it'll give you some options here configure is the one we're looking for you can do some other things I don't know why you would change the host name these devices the frame relay switches and like the Ethernet switches they're dummy devices you're not going to be able to log into them when you're in the actual emulation mode you're not going to be able to do telnet to the frame relay switch and then configure it there all the configuration has to be done in GNS3 so go ahead and click configure and you will get this pop up here okay so this is where the magic happens you're gonna have your node configurator you have a list of nodes here of course we're just looking at the frame relay switch one so you can go from here just highlight fr1 and this shows you the node configuration right now the mappings are blank because we don't have anything mapped this is what we're going to do when we're configuring this is we're actually going to assign Delsys to connections and create a mapping so we have three routers, R1, R2, and R3, and you can set up a number of different ports on your frame relay switch. I don't know what the maximum is. Obviously, it goes up to 10, 11. Well, it seems like you can get quite a few on here. We're just going to be using three today. So if we go ahead and take a look back at our, our network diagram here, what we're going to do is we're going to assign DELC 102 to the connection that goes to R1, and the same thing with 103, and then 201 and 301 will be assigned to the connections that go to R2 and R3, respectively. The thing to keep in mind is that what you're actually doing when you're assigning these is you're creating a PVC, a permanent virtual circuit. So what we're going to do actually is we're going to assign DELC 102 to the connection that goes to R1, and then we're going to complete that mapping by assigning DELC 201 to the connection that goes to R2, because what our actual end-to-end -end connection is, traffic will go from R1 through 102 across the frame relay cloud, which won't be much of a cloud because it's just going to be a single switch, and then out to R2, and then vice versa. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so we're going to use port 1 for the connection to R1. So our DELC is actually going to be 102, and then its destination is going to be port 2, which will be our connection to R2, and then we want to make this 201. And then you can go ahead and click add and now you have your mapping so let's do the same thing for the connection to r3 so again on port 1 we're going to assign delc 103 on port 3 we're going to assign delc 301 and that's it i mean we have a really simple network here so they're configured in pairs so if we look at our network diagram again we can see what we've done is we've configured the mapping from delc 102 to 201 and 103 to 301 so we can recreate this network with only two mappings so let's go ahead and apply this you can either click the apply button if you want to continue configuring but we're done here so we'll just go ahead and hit ok pop back into GNS3 and then at any point you can go ahead and right click this hit the configure again click on your switch and it will show you the mappings all right so let's go ahead and get this wired up and go up here and your version of GNS3 may be different I don't think they're significantly different but go up and click this icon here that's for your wiring and we're going to be using serial connections so click on serial and then I'm going to go from R1 
and then drag and when I hit FR1 I click on it and it's going to give me these options here so it's going to give us a, the three different connections obviously R1 we want to connect to frame relay switch port 1 click that and you can see we get a green light and let's do that for the other routers 2 to 2 and 3 2 3 and once you do this you'll see that the frame relay has these green connections and if you look up here in the top I'll slide this over. Oh, that doesn't give us much. The uh, frame relay switch is showing green. That's because this guy is going to be always on. There's nothing you could do to it. You can't go in and configure it from emulation mode and you also can't stop it. If you right click it, you'll see that you don't have the option to stop it like you do with my my. Oh, <laughs> that's a good tip. When you're done doing your physical wiring, remember to come up here and click this stop. There you go. And now you'll be back to normal configuration mode, I guess. So if I right click on my frame relay switch, I don't have the option to shut it down like I would with these guys. Like you have a start and stop. This guy's always going to be on. This little topology summary is kind of neat. Uh, you can go ahead and expand these and it'll show you where these guys are connected. I think if you right click it, yeah, if you right click it, you get the option to expand all. It's good for just rechecking and making sure that your connections are correct. This is a small network, not a big deal. If you get a big network, you may want to refer to this before you start up your devices, which is exactly what we're going to do now. I'm going to go ahead and start the devices. I'm going to let GNS3 do its thing here and I'm going to pop into my terminal emulator. Okay, so I'm in the terminal emulator and I am connected to the devices R1, R2, and R3. Uh, what I did, and I'll show you on R3 here, is I just went through and I went into configuration mode, gave this guy a host name, and then I went and dropped on some configuration on my console port so that I don't have messages blocking what I'm doing and I have privilege level 15, blah, 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 and it won't time out. Anywho, so the big important thing is to get to the interface and I'm going to encapsulate that with frame relay and then do a no shut. So I'm, I'm not going to go through and configure everything that was on that network diagram. I just want to show you the uh, frame relay bits here. We're not going to throw on the IP address and do our mappings or anything like that. So I did this on all three devices. So let's pop back over to R1 and clear out some space here. So if I do a show IP in brief, you can see that our serial interface is up and up. If I do a show frame LMI, if everything went well, I should be seeing LMI, and I am. As I've mentioned in other lessons, the LMI type that the GNS3 frame relay switch uses is ANSI. And rather than using Cisco, it's going to use ANSI. And we'll come back to this in just a bit here because this, this is going to be one of the, the limitations of using this frame relay switch. So we have LMI passing from our router to the frame relay switch. So we should be seeing uh, PVC. So if we do a show frame PVC, and this is R1, so we actually have two PVCs here. It gives you a bunch of information. Let me scroll back up here. What we're looking for here is to make sure that we have the two PVCs. They're unused right now because they don't have mapping set up. Uh, they are active, which is great. But you can see we have Del C102 and Del C103. So if we jump over to R2, we should be able to see the same thing. Show frame LMI. Yep, we got our LMI. Go ahead and do show frame. PVC and on this one we'll only have the single PVC and if we were to go to R3 we would see the PVC there so this is a good check as well to make sure that everything's working correctly before you get into actually configuring your mappings and getting your connections up and going so really that's all there is to this I'm going to show you just a couple of the then they're minimal the uh, downsides to using the GNS3 frame relay switch so we're back in GNS3 and I've shut down the devices let's go ahead into our frame relay switch and check out the configuration and let's say for this example that we had screwed up the configuration if you watched the uh, point to point video you saw me do this say that we didn't want 102 here to edit these you just double click on them and it will fill in your source and destination port DLC combinations so in this case let's say that 102 was not the correct DLC let's say that it should have been 112 so it should be easy to fix this I should be able to go in and change this DLC to 112 go ahead and click add which is great I've got my mapping this is a correct mapping I want 112 to 201 so now all I have to do is get rid of this DLC 102 to 201 mapping and I'll be golden so I just go ahead and click the delete button Oh, a link is connected in port 1. So it gets a little tricky when you're trying to delete this. So let's go ahead and click OK to apply this mapping. And so what I have to do is actually have to go in and delete this connection to R1. Now I can go back into the frame relay switch, select this mapping, and then delete it. 
go ahead and click OK. Go back up to my serial cabling icon. Reconnect this to port 1. Remember to click Stop. Go ahead, right click, bring this up again, and now I have my correct mapping. So it's just a little bit of goofiness with the way that it does this, and that you can add, change, and delete these mappings. But if you're deleting a mapping that's on a connection that's already hooked up in GNS3, you're going to have to go out and disconnect that connection and then reconnect it. So a little bit goofy there, just a good thing to keep in mind. Okay, so I have a new project open here. I'm going to actually bring in two frame relay switches and I want to emulate a frame relay cloud. So what I want to do here is I want to create a connection that comes in from R1 over here. I want to throw a router up here to R2 over here. It's going to come in R1 on Dell C102, go to frame relay switch one, and then from there it's going to be passed on to frame relay switch two and come out here and that's going to be Del C201. So the Del C between these two devices will be 222 and as we'll see in a future lesson this is an NTI connection. So what I would do is I would go in hit configure and one would go to 102 and it would go out port 2 on Del C222. Add OK. Same thing over here and we're going to make port 1 go to R2 and we're going to have that be 201 and then port 2 will be 222. That's that Del C that is between your two frame relay switches. So then you would go and cable this up. Grab your serial. Connect here. We're going to connect to port 1 for each of these. Now we want to connect frame relay switch port 2 to frame relay switch port 2 on frame relay switch 2. And we get the you cannot connect these devices. So that's another downside of using this is that you can't create NTI connections. You're not able to connect frame relay switches to each other. 90% of the time you're not going to have to do that. But to show some of the more interesting stuff with frame relay, we would like to be able to do this. So what this means is that anytime you're going to be emulating a frame relay cloud, you're going to have to do it with a single switch. It really only supports the DTE to DCE connections. And then the final downside is that you can't change the LMI type. As we saw earlier and I've talked about in other lessons, the LMI type that these frame relay switches use in GNS3 is ANSI. So you're unable to get in there and change that. You can't log into these devices and there is no configuration option for this. So you're always going to be using LMI type ANSI between your routers and the frame relay switches. Again, these quote unquote downsides aren't going to affect you a whole lot. If you just want to get in there and simulate a frame relay network, this is more than sufficient for, you know, 90% of the stuff you're going to do. When you start getting into playing around with, you know, troubleshooting with the LMI and all that stuff, you're not going to be able to do it with this switch and, you know, some of the higher level stuff, you know, some of the PPP bundling and all that stuff, you won't be able to do it unless you have a quote unquote intelligent frame relay switch. The way to get around this is to actually use a Cisco router as a frame relay switch and we'll see that in the next lesson. So with that you can get in there and configure it and add some of these higher level capabilities. Alright so let's wrap this guy up. Configuring a frame relay switch in GNS3 is very easy. You just need to know which DLCs need to be assigned to each interface and create that mapping and we saw that in action. While the frame relay switching GNS3 is great for most of your frame relay simulations I'd say like 90 plus percent. There are some limitations such as the inability to link the frame relay switches together to emulate a frame relay cloud and you also are unable to change the LMI type on the frame relay switch as well as there is a little bit of goofiness involved when you have to go in and change your frame relay mappings and we saw that in action as well. We'll see in a future lesson actually the next lesson that those limitations can be overcome by configuring a router as a frame relay switch. You can take a Cisco router and configure it as a frame relay switch and get some of this higher level capability back. Now, I highly recommend you to take GNS3 and set up some simple frame relay networks. Get in there, play around, get your hands dirty, get on the CLI, start doing your verification commands. Do some simple configuration, set up your frame relay maps, throw some debugs on there, go crazy. That's the great part of GNS3 slash Dynamips is that you're able to emulate these networks and go do stuff, play around, break shit, and you don't have to worry because it's not a production network. You could get in there and, you know, get familiar with debugs and some other commands and get in there and do stuff that you wouldn't normally do. Again, it's your sandbox. Go ahead and have fun. Okay, thanks once again for joining me in the Packet Lab today. And as always, I hope this helps you on your route to becoming a network god.